Have you ever seen a rock so big it makes a house look small? In this video, we'll journey around the globe to discover four of the world's largest boulders. Colossal freestanding rocks that defy imagination. Prepare to be amazed by the sheer scale of these natural masterpieces, revealing their breathtaking beauty and the incredible forces that shape them. Let's explore the fascinating stories behind these behemoth boulders. But first, some housekeeping. What actually counts as a boulder? Generally speaking, boulders are large, detached rocks often found lying on the surface, separate from any bedrock outcrop. They can be a few feet across or as big or bigger than a house. By contrast, a monolith is a massive rock formation that's still connected to the Earth's bedrock, essentially the exposed part of a much larger rock body extending into the ground. In this video, we'll be focusing on true boulders, those hefty rocks that broke free from their origin and now sit in place, often alone, thanks to nature's grand forces. But how big can a boulder be? Geologically, there's no upper size limit. Some of the biggest boulders are essentially small hills themselves. The giant rocks we'll meet stand several stories tall and weigh thousands or even tens of thousands of tons. From icy plains to arid deserts, such giants can appear almost anywhere, each with a unique origin story. Let's start with a glacial giant, a boulder that was delivered by ice. During the last ice age, vast sheets and glaciers plucked huge rocks from mountains and carried them across continents. When the climate warmed and the ice melted, these rocks were left stranded far from home. Geologists call these travelers glacial erratics, meaning their rock type erratically doesn't match the local bedrock. Enormous boulders dropped in seemingly random places, telling a story of ancient ice highways. Please note, I'm Australian so I'll probably butcher the pronunciation of everything. Sorry in advance. Big Rock of Canada, the Okotox Erratic. One of the most famous glacial erratics is nicknamed Big Rock, near Okotox in Alberta. This massive quartzite boulder weighs an estimated 16,500 tons, about 36 million pounds. To put that in perspective, that's roughly the weight of 30 fully loaded jumbo jets or over 200 blue whales. Big Rock measures about 41 by 18 by 9 meters in size, or 135 by 60 by 30 feet, and looms 9 meters or 30 feet high. It's so large that it actually split into two main pieces, but both parts together are considered one giant boulder. But how did such a gigantic rock end up on the open Canadian prairie? The story goes back 15,000 years to the end of the Pleistocene. A huge landslide in the Rocky Mountains dropped millions of tons of quartzite onto a glacier. That glacier carried the debris eastward on its back. As the glacier merged with the continental ice sheet and flowed south, it transported Big Rock an astonishing 480 kilometers or 300 miles from its source. It gently set Big Rock down in its current spot. This boulder is part of a long chain of erratics called the Foothills Erratic Strain, strewn along 930 kilometers of Alberta's plains. Today, Big Rock sits alone on flat farmland, visible for miles across the prairie a literal landmark used by indigenous Blackfoot peoples for navigation long before modern times. Big Rock's significance is not just in its size, but what it teaches us. Its quartzite composition is completely unlike the local prairie rocks, proving it came from the mountains. It's a concrete piece of evidence of glacial transport on a grand scale. In fact, the Okotox erratic is recognized as the largest glacial erratic ever identified. Scientists even use it to estimate how far and fast ice sheets moved. Talk about a rock with a story. But glaciers didn't just deposit big boulders in North America. In Northern Europe, the Baltic region also has glacial giants. Ihelkovi, I'm probably saying it wrong, in coastal Estonia is the largest known erratic in Europe. Dubbed a Sunset Glow Boulder, Ihelkovi is 7.6 meters tall and about 49.6 meters in circumference roughly the size of a two-story house. Its volume is an enormous 930 cubic meters, and is estimated to weigh around 2,500 tons. That's heavier than 400 African elephants. Ihelkovi is composed of pegmatite granite, a rock not native to its resting place. Like Big Rock, it was likely carried by Scandinavian ice sheets and left near Estonia's coast when the ice receded 10,000 plus years ago. Imagine the power required to drag a 2,500 ton boulder across the landscape. Glaciers truly are mighty. Today, Ihelkovi sits partly in the Baltic Sea shallows, glowing at sunset, hence its name, 
and captivating visitors with its sheer bulk. But not all big boulders travel by ice. Some are born right where they sit, sculpted free by weathering and erosion. In many deserts, hills and mountains, the elements wear away softer rocks, leaving behind tougher, more resistant chunks. Over millions of years, entire cliffs or outcrops can erode away except for isolated big blocks, and voila, you get a freestanding boulder. These boulders often perch on the land like stranded giants, sometimes in gravity-defying positions. In the Mojave Desert of California stands a legendary boulder aptly named Giant Rock. This granite behemoth is often touted as the largest freestanding boulder in the world, at least by volume. It rises about seven stories tall and covers 5,800 square feet of ground area. Locals estimate its weight around 30,000 tons, which would make it even heavier than Big Rock in Canada. Whether or not it's truly the world's largest is debated. Some say other contenders exist in Mongolia or South Africa, but there's no doubt Giant Rock is a whopper of a boulder. The origin of Giant Rock is fascinating. At first glance, you might suspect it's another glacial erratic, but it's not. No glaciers ever reached that part of the California desert. Some speculated it could be an Inselberg, an isolated mountain remnant, or part of a larger formation, but its surfaces are relatively unfractured and smooth. According to geologist Richard Hazlitt, the simplest explanation is likely true. Giant rock almost definitely simply rolled off the little outcropping next to it. In other words, it was once part of a rocky hill nearby. Over time, natural cracks and gravity caused an enormous chunk of the hill's granite to break off. Perhaps aided by an earthquake or just gradual erosion, this slab tumbled down and settled upright in the sand ages ago. What's left is a lone giant where the hill used to be. In fact, a major earthquake in 1992 shook loose more fragments from the outcrop, showing how such boulders continue to evolve. In 2000, Giant Rock itself fractured, and a huge piece split off its base, revealing a white granite interior, a reminder that even giant boulders aren't eternal. Some of the most fun big boulders are the ones that make you stop and scratch your head. How on earth is that rock staying up there? Across the world, there are famous balancing boulders, Huge rocks teetering on edges or perched on small bases, as if placed by a giant toddler. These formations usually result from a hard boulder resisting erosion atop a softer pedestal or slope, eventually coming to rest in improbable positions. Let's check out a famous example. In the ancient town of, oh man, I'm gonna butcher this, Mamalapuram in India, a massive round granite boulder sits on a steep hillside, seemingly ready to roll at any moment. Nicknamed Krishna's Butterball, this rock is about 6 meters tall and 5 meters wide, or 20 by 16 feet, and weighs an estimated 250 tons. Astonishingly, it balances on a small area of contact, resting on a smooth slope of granite bedrock. For at least a thousand years, likely much longer, it has defied gravity, barely budging. Local lore likens it to the Hindu god Krishna's drop butter ball, since young Krishna was legendarily fond of stealing butter. The Butterball has impressed and vexed rulers over the centuries. Legend says around 1908, the local British governor was so concerned it would roll into town that he tried to have it pushed downhill. Seven elephants were recruited to tug the boulder, yet it wouldn't move an inch. The giant rock simply refused to obey human attempts, and it remains perched in the same spot to this day. Tourists now love to take photos pretending to hold up the Butterball, but in reality, this geological oddity seems to hold itself up with ease. Geologists suspect the Butterball is actually a remnant of weathered bedrock, a core stone, that was left behind as surrounding rock eroded. Its underside has latched onto a small depression, giving it a surprisingly low center of gravity, one reason it hasn't toppled. Some propose it could even be an ancient erratic boulder left by past geological processes, but its granite matches the local bedrock, so it's likely domestic. Whatever its origin, Krishna's Butterball is a prime example of how even a 250 ton rock can seem to float when perfectly balanced. It's both a geological wonder and a tourist attraction that adds a bit of whimsy to science. Gravity, after all, is what ultimately will win. But not today. From the frozen relics of the Ice Age to the sun-baked sculptures of the desert, the world's biggest boulders are as diverse as they are enormous. Visiting any of these gigantic rocks can be a humbling experience. Imagine standing next to a boulder the size of an apartment building. You'll feel like an ant. 
or touching a rock and realising it voyaged hundreds of kilometres on glacial ice to get where it currently is. Whether raging ice sheets, relentless weathering or simply time, Earth itself can create natural wonders that rival anything humans have built. Next time you come across a big rock, take a moment to appreciate its story. It might have been part of a mountain, part of a seafloor, or a passenger on a glacier. The biggest boulders in the world are more than just rock, they are storytellers in stone, and their tales are truly rock-solid evidence of nature's power and creativity. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.